Hi everyone, I'm Janet Robin, and today we're gonna learn a really cool little trick. Um, I'm often asked this, how do you do a finger picking part and then strum if you have to, like in the chorus section of a song or another section of a song, without grabbing it from the mic stand. You can do that. Um, I've seen people do it. It just, it doesn't seem as smooth. And I've also seen people do this, right? And finger pick and then grab it and play. Doesn't look cool on stage. And what happens if you're the singer and, and the guitar player? So uh, there's a lot of ways of doing this. Well, not so many ways. There's a few ways. I've seen people do it where they kind of hold it like this. They're kind of holding it in their palm and they're kind of doing that, right? They're kind of like doing that. I find that to be a little bit more, um, I don't know, confusing to, to uh, move into this part of your hand and then to grab it quickly. It's a little bit more clumsy, actually. That's the better word for it. So um, I came up with this. I'm putting it between these two fingers, okay? And specifically putting it between these two, these two digits, okay? This, these are called digits, the lines that separate where the bones move, okay? And I put it, instead of totally perpendicular like this, I kind of have it like this, right? And then that allows me to still finger pick, still move these, this part, right, of the finger. And then the second thing, the other reason why I like it, doing it this way, is it's real easy to just grab with your thumb, right? See, I'll do it again. And slow motion, right? So what I tell people before you know, you even try to attempt to do this on the guitar is to actually just carry a pick around, you know, for a few days in your pocket. And when you're just sitting around, whatever, watching TV, hanging out, or even in the car, you know, when you don't need two hands, um, you're at a red light, just try this. Because it is kind of like a magic trick where you have to like work on this actual skill. And let me do it this way so you can see what I'm doing. Right? Have I dropped it? Of course, I have dropped the pick before. Not very many times though. This is, I would say this is the most fail safe way to do it in my opinion. Um, I always have picks on the mic stand just in case, but this has proved to be really helpful. Okay, so now let's apply it and I'll try to go kind of slow so you can kind of see what I was doing. Um, I was finger picking and then I did have a break, just a second where I could switch. Some songs you don't have that much time. You literally have to just go boom and play. That might require you kind of hammering the chord to get it in time. But this one, we're just starting the basic easier uh, progression so that you have a second to switch. Okay. So you can choose any finger picking progression you want. Um, especially if there's an actual song that requires you to do, you know, finger picking and then go into, you know, strumming. But here I just did this. was a second there where I could actually do the move. Regardless though, I did the move pretty smooth and I was in time coming in, you know, with the other, the strumming section. So if you want, if you're practicing a certain finger picking part, what you should do is take the very last chord of whatever that part is, okay, and do the trick and do the strum on the next section. So for example, mine is this, and then I'm 
I'm switching and then I switch back switching All right switch back switch okay now what happens if if it is a quicker part and you don't have time you know you don't have a second to to make the switch you may have to compensate with your left hand you might have to hammer the chord uh, for the, the very first beat uh, unless you really nail it and you can get it in time so if I for example did this same section okay so I nailed it all right that was pretty fast there was no break there and I'm switching here right hand left hand so that's pretty much it of course each piece you know whatever song you're playing may require uh, you know different timing when you might have more time to make the, the switch or you might have less time just like I showed you regardless you want to be in time. If you don't have time, even less time than I just showed you, let me show you the hammer thing. So, yeah, kind of a ghost hammer. But ideally, you do want to be spot on if you can grab it in time. So I suggest, once again, walking around with this pick and just doing this for a couple days and then apply it to your guitar. Uh, if you are interested in learning exactly what it was that I'm playing, it's just an A minor 7. Uh, it's like a G over A, a C. Just keep that same A minor 7 shape. And I'm just doing a Travis picking here. And then this like F sharp over the C. And then back to like G with the C. And then there was the break one, and I could switch. Okay, so let's do this together. We'll do it slow, and let's see if you can, you know, nail it the same time I do. And this one, I'm going to do with the little break, okay? And then after the this one, I'll do the one that doesn't have the break at all. Okay, here we go with the progression. Notice that one I did have a little hammer. I went from you can do it that way or let's see. You have to really get there in time, right? You don't have a lot of time. So you gotta nail that fifth string. But again, it would depend on what you're playing as to how fast you have to switch. The main thing is to get this little technique down. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed this little pick trick, I like to call it. Uh, very useful, very, very useful for all guitarists. And, it, and once again, it doesn't matter if you're playing acoustic or electric, but for sure, um, it, it happens a lot on acoustic because most of the time we're finger picking on acoustic. So uh, practice hard your little trick here and I'll see you at the next lesson.